I, I actually wanted to ask you this question, Matt. Do you think that minimalism is like waning or like on its way out in, in some kind of way? Hey team, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be talking about minimalism and the current state of the trend today in 2021. Now if you were addicted to YouTube back in 2017 and 2018 like I was, minimalism was hitting its peak. Matt Diavella became a god in a single year. Thumbnails with people in empty rooms were all over the internet. And suddenly everyone was talking about all the stuff that they didn't have. Now I'm fully going to admit that I was a part of this bandwagon. I jumped on this trend like so many other people because I realized that minimalism could fit nicely into the messaging that I already had on this channel, which was to live intentionally. I made the minimalist packing videos, the minimalist wardrobe videos, and I even made a hot take on the subject that actually got Matt's attention. But what I've noticed over the last couple years is that there's been a definite downturn in the amount of minimalist content coming out, especially here on YouTube. Even the minimalism max daddy Matt Diavella is not publishing as much minimalist content anymore. Outside of his last video that he made about what he learned over 10 years of being a minimalist, he hadn't uploaded a video on the subject for over eight months. Even on this channel, my last video about minimalism was done back in December. So is the trend dying out? Are we seeing the end of people's interest in minimalism or is it just shifting and changing as time goes on? Let's get into it. So looking at Google Trend, I can see that the term minimalism definitely peaked in 2017, 2018 and it's kind of dipped and is now kind of plateaued. Now, obviously there's still minimalism videos out on YouTube, but they're not gone completely, but the people still making minimalist content are the ones who have made minimalism a big part of what they're trying to communicate online. Now we're going to be talking about Leah and I's relationship with minimalism later in the video, but I wanted to get someone else's opinion on minimalism as a trend before we get into that. There's Joe. <laughs> Joe, say hi to the team. Oh, hello, team. <laughs> I always find it crazy, you know, meeting people that I've been watching for so long. It's like it's so cool. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm I'm stoked that like we get to connect formally uh, via the internet in our gray shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Very minimalist. Do you think that minimalism is like? waning or like on its way out in in some kind of way it's over it's over pack up <laughs> our bags we, like minimalism <laughs> is no longer a thing cut it so out I, th I think that minimalism as a trend uh is definitely starting to kind of fade because it's it's so well known like it's almost a household uh term people understand what minimalism is yeah, I think it just really depends what your definition of minimalism is. Because to some people, they just think of it as an art movement or an aesthetic, which is fine. So in that sense, yeah, trends come and go all the time. But as a lifestyle where it's all about being more intentional and just kind of removing the distractions, I, I don't know if that's something that necessarily can just go away. People are starting to realize um, that living with less is better, but perhaps you don't need to take on the label minimum, like, do you know what I mean? Right. Really, like, when it comes down to it, minimalism is about, you know, this, this process and this practice of, of uh, really being intentional with the things that we own and getting rid of um, a lot of our stuff to make room for what is important, right? Totally. Uh, I think most people watching this would know that. But then, it's like, what what else, like, do you talk about besides that? You know, you can go to different aspects of, like, clothing and like you know waste and, and whatnot and obviously like there's different layers to the onion that you can peel back minimalism can be a bit of a one-liner in that regard it's kind of like you know live with less live a better life but you know right. how many different facets of that one story can you tell that's an interesting thing like minimalism is very simple when you break it down it's not that complicated and mm -hmm. i think it took that like 2018 2019 time period for people to get even their heads wrapped around that concept and now mm -hmm. i think we're just seeing that like a lot of people get it 
They don't necessarily need to be reminded constantly of what that's all about. To new people, it'll always be interesting, but to people who've already seen it, who've already seen like the flat overlay shot of the itemized <laughs> thumbnails, I'm over it. <laughs> but I feel like minimalism is always gonna be a helpful lifestyle. It's always gonna be something that's practical for as long as we have this strong current of consumerism in our society. Mm -hmm. And for as long as people are struggling to find meaning in their lives. Okay, so is the title of the video a little dramatic? Yes. Could it be categorized as clickbait? Perhaps. Minimalism isn't really over. It's just going through an interesting change right now. See, unlike Marie Kondo, which was like an overnight craze and everybody thought that we were gonna be like specifically folding our laundry for generations to come and then suddenly dead two weeks later, minimalism has stood the test of time. And I think for a lot of people, it's going to continue to be valuable. But part of the reason why minimalism has held on so long is because anyone can do it and they can do it in pretty well any way that they see fit. And this is true for Leah and I as well. So let's get into it. Now, if you haven't already, please like this video. <laughs> Leah and I give away 100% of our AdSense revenue to help save the planet. And most recently, we planted over 10,000 trees with the help of all of you and donated over $4,000 to help prevent old growth logging here on Vancouver Island. So every single time that you like, share, or comment on these videos, that helps this video get more reach, which means more views, which means more money, which means more impact. So. Thank you in advance for doing so. Y'all are the best. If you follow this channel even remotely closely, you know that Leah and I recently moved into our first home that we purchased together. And since that day, my minimalist brain has had some difficulties. Leah, do you wanna speak on this for a second? How frumpy do I look? You look fine. Mm -mm. How have I been during the process of trying to purchase things for our home. Purchasing things in general is difficult for <laughs> Levi. He needs to talk through it for so long. Like most purchases, it takes you about a year to make, right? We're gonna talk about it and analyze it for a <laughs> long time. Cow. Levi's favorite phrase for the first month that we lived here was, we're hemorrhaging money, we're hemorrhaging money. We knew this was gonna happen when we moved into this apartment. There were certain things that we sold and we got rid of from our old place because we knew that we wanted to curate this space into our own home in a way that was actually functional but as soon as we buy chairs because we need chairs as soon as we buy a shelf or something like that you're like no oh, we're spending money <laughs> it's been hard i think because we always try to make conscious purchase decisions we're really really aware that every dollar that we spend has an impact every purchase that we make supports one industry over another. So we're always trying to make the right choice. It just becomes kind of stressful. Like you don't want to buy the wrong thing and then feel like an idiot later. I think that's your fear. You have real like fear of buyer's remorse, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That That is your absolute fear. That was lovely uh, or yeah. embarrassing for me. I don't know. You smell nice. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I think especially in these moments of transition in life, your belongings and your life choices and your values come under pretty tight scrutiny. When you're doing the same thing over and over and over again for months at a time and nothing new is introduced, you can just kind of believe that whatever you have is normal and correct. But here we were forced to come up with the exact right purchase for every scenario and that is always stressful. In my defense, I think that my minimalist instinct is to always have as little as possible and only the things that I really want. And that's difficult to do when you haven't had an office before. Leah and I had to fully furnish a room that we never had before. So we had to buy desks and chairs and shelving and all of the things that make that room functional for us to do the work that we need to do every single day. And even though I understood that it was functional and needed, it felt like we were acquiring stuff. 
Are we less of minimalists now than we were before? It may appear that way if you were to look at it from the outside in. Leah and I's life doesn't look like a minimalist catalog, but this is something that I'm learning as well. As we get older, I'm realizing that to be a minimalist is really a luxury of being young without many responsibilities. Leah and I actually lived with our parents for nine months last year, and in that process, we kind of got an insight into what it was like to try and live a minimalist lifestyle when you have a big family, when there's other people in the household who don't necessarily live the same kind of life that you do. Having a big family or being less financially stable or coming from a culture that values things differently are all huge barriers that Leah and I don't really have to face when we live in our comfy little bubble. So I wouldn't say that we're not minimalists anymore, but certainly our relationship with it is changing over the years as we've come to see. I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, and I think that more people talking about the reality of this, I think, is important. So let me know what you think down below. But if you're interested in learning more about my perspective on minimalism and getting into the nitty gritty a little bit more, my ebook is still planning to come out later on this month. So make sure that you are signed up for that newsletter and you'll get a discount when it comes out. But regardless of your opinion on minimalism, I wanna thank you for watching this video, for taking the time out of your day to spend some of it with me because I really appreciate that. And of course, if you are subscribed to the channel, then we will see you in the next one.